Do you notice the inequality among the young people? Uh, what are the reasons for it and which regions are more privileged and why? Uh, well, obviously there is, uh, we can notice inequality among, well, uh, among young people. Um, I think it's a global, it's a global problem, global challenge now. Yes, there is, I can say yes, I can notice it. Which of them are more privileged? Which of the young people are more privileged? I can tell, uh, in my opinion, surely the young people living in the big cities are more privileged, having um, more opportunities, different mentality still, I mean, in the cities, there is obviously a different mentality. And also, in the regions, uh, the, the way people think is a bit different from those uh, who are living in the cities. And they are more conservative. And also, we have a cult of family cult. The role of the family, of the parents, in the, in the regions, in the rural areas, more than in the, in the big cities and megapolises where young people are going to study, where young people are engaging in different activities. They have different opportunities and they are joining it and they are less under control of the parents. So that's why I think definitely the, people, the young people living in the cities are more privileged. So can you compare the inequality in the USSR times uh, and now? I, I can't compare. For me, it's not that easy to compare because my the period of my of my life mainly was in uh, already in, the, in independent Azerbaijan. So I was born in the Soviet Union. Of course, in the 90s, it was still the uh, the atmosphere in the country was still like the Soviet Union. I can remember it from my childhood. But what I know, what I can witness from the uh, attitude of the of people older than me, which of which the, the, the youth period of their life was in the Soviet Union. The advantages, of course, in my opinion, are more now for the young people. There are no iron curtain in the country. The country is open. There is more of democratic processes happening in the independent country already after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And there are um, uh, people are traveling to different countries, uh, other uh, Young people are coming. There are exchanges. Young, young people going to study abroad, and it's all it's all uh, affecting the way of thinking, the way of life of young people here in the country. So, if we if we talk about young people generally, what was the the main disadvantages during the Soviet period? In my opinion, is of course the closed the the, the closed society, which was developing uh, inside of its own and that was affecting the, um, uh, the, 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 the way of development of the, of the young people and the way of their uh, self-development and their uh, lifestyle generally. So this is regarding the, the period of the USSR. What are the possibilities to make more opportunities for disadvantaged youth? The possibilities of course to engage them. To engage them to make their parents understand that the engagement of their children to, to different activities is better for them. Uh, definitely, well, here in the, in the country we have uh, still taking in consider, in, into consideration the, the difference between, as I told, between the big city as Baku and the rural areas or other cities or other districts. There is still a difference in the way of um, thinking and the conservativeness. The rural areas are more conservative. Uh, therefore, the role of parents is bigger in that places, and especially it's, it, it's more addressed to young people which are females, because uh, parents are trying to keep them in the, into the safe balloon or you know, in the safe cube, just to try to put them at the side from all dangers. That's why they're trying to uh, control everything, to push everything. Uh, of course, I mean, from this, uh, this is a habit of parents. They love their children. This is the, the purpose why they do that. But from the, from the other point, from the other side, by doing this, they are putting in the, um, their kids in the, into the frames, which cannot go out of the box. And they're there in the box. They cannot go out of the box. So I think this is the, the biggest problem we have. If we speak about other uh, disadvantaged views, um, of course there are several different categories of disadvantaged young people. It can be disabled young people, it can be 
refugee category, young people, it can be uh, gender, gender or different minorities. Uh, of course, each of them has different uh, way and different tool of, um, of giving opportunities. Of course, in inclusion is the biggest and the, mo the most important thing for them. Inclusion to society, inclusion to the, into inclusion to the different activities, and uh, uh, inclusion to to the general uh, lifestyle of uh, of other ad advantage, let's say, uh, youth or advantage young people. Um, how does the Scott organization help young people to become more active members of society? Well, the generally, uh, Scout Association, the Association of Scouts of Azerbaijan, is the association which is open for everyone. For everyone, regardless of its uh, race, uh, sex, nationality, uh, religion, it's open for everyone. So in our organization, we have different representatives of different religions, representatives of different uh, nationalities, uh, and even uh, citizenships because it's open for any person, any individual having a legal right to live in Azerbaijan. So that person, that young people can become a member of the association. Moreover, we are trying to, uh, to, so, to make more social activities, to make um, different activities not only in Baku but in other, in other areas in the districts of Azerbaijan and to include, especially coming to the female, male, the gender issue. Now we work on it more for the, mainly for the rural areas, for the districts, because in Baku we don't really have this, uh, this type of uh, issues, but in the, in the districts, unfortunately, we still have um, these issues and the parents don't want to let the, their daughter, the daughter or the kids of uh, female gender to go to the camps, to stay the, in the camps for the night. And we're trying to involve more female leaders, which will um, be more trustful for the parents, which will be more... Parents will think, okay, if it's a female leader, I will allow my daughter to go for the overnight stay uh, in the camp, etc. <clears throat> so, uh, also we are trying to include uh, those uh, young people which are uh, less advantaged, or as you call dis disadvantaged young people, such as from internats and uh, the places where kids are living without their parents. So we're also making the activity there. We want to, them also to become a part of our association. We help financially for some districts, for some financially for some individuals uh, when they uh, approach us, uh, explaining the reason, explaining the situation. Where of course, um, if we can, if we have a possibility, we're trying to financially support them. Um, can you tell more about the Scout Association in Azerbaijan? Well, the Scout Association is in Azerbaijan was founded in 1997 and in 2000 became the uh, full member of the World Organization of the Scout Movement. Uh, they have a period of more active uh, engagement with, uh, with young people. There were periods of less activeness so, and there were periods when the association was almost um, on the bottom out, basically. So. Uh, right now we are with a new team, we started to refresh the organization and uh, starting from 2013 it's a new board, it's a new team which are pushing the organization very hard which, is, uh, which has the aims to develop the movement not only in the, in the cities but also in the districts uh, and, uh, and the rural areas even in the high, vi in the high uh, villages. Um, plus we are doing more activities now we're, in, we're building a program, we're uh, building a youth program for, for all categories, uh, age categories, I mean. And also, uh, now we are more engaged to the world level scouting. And as a result of our uh, internal policies and internal way of uh, management, we, are, we won the beat and we will host the World Scout Conference in 2017. And one of our targets after the conference to get to reach the number of uh, 5,000 as the first uh, three years and next three years it will be as a plan will be 10,000. 10, so, so far we have officially registered 1,700 members. And this is what we, are ha what we have in the plan. How is the Camp Wonderland connected to the European Youth Capital 2016? The, well, European Youth Capital 2016 uh, as you know, Ganja is European capital, and for the entire 2016, 
uh, mainly many uh, many young many youth organizations are supporting uh, this youth capital uh, activities and plus also Scout Association was supporting Genja uh, to win this uh, to win the bid to become a youth capital so we continue our support and we were the official supporters of it from the very beginning even before they the, uh, it was announced that Ganja is uh, is becoming the European news capital. So as a as a continuation of uh, of support to it, we decided to uh, make a Wonderland camp here in Ganja this year. And uh, as you see, it's a beautiful nature here, so it's absolutely absolutely feasible for us to make a camp here. And generally, by by our strategy, Wonderland Azerbaijan is the international camp which is uh, taking place in different regions of Azerbaijan uh, from the year to the year. So it started in one district and it's already fourth in a row, Wonderland, and it was moving from, uh, from different parts of Azerbaijan from one to another part. So it, now it's a uh, turn of Ganja and probably next year we'll, we'll do it in another, in different place. Uh, thank you very much for your answers.